and welcome back to another Bob Blast. Hi, I'm Bob Burridge, and this one is all about a question I'm asked an awful lot of, why do you do a colored background first before I even start the painting? In other words, I tone the entire canvas or the paper. And the real answer, the short answer is because that's the way I was trained in art school. And why we do that is kind of like get command of the, of the surface. You're the boss. Besides, it's kind of nice to start halfway. You know, you put down a warm background or even a cool background. For me, it was a warm background. You can actually see them peeking through, and that's what I like to do. When they peek through, and it gives it that je ne sais quoi. See, when I scrape into it while it's still wet, it creates these nice drawing lines. Here, it's pretty subtle. So it makes the body look like it's glowing. And here, I just wanted to show you the paper was originally orange warm but then you can see how I come back in and start letting some of that warm color peek through. This is on a canvas. Yeah. Okay so and then you know my landscapes always start off orange and it gives it a nice glow. I think that's what I like about the orange. Sometimes it's pink and some of the books out there say use some red. That works too. Let me show you my materials. For me I mostly use white gesso. It's pretty common, it's everywhere. And, but did you know they also come in different metallics, you know, and different colors? Down here, I'm showing you exactly what I'm using. For gold, I found that the Daniel Smith acrylic gesso, it's an iridescent gold. It, boy, when it dries, it's really gold almost like pearlescent gold. So just to let you know, this is the stuff that I use. Now, that's the Daniel Smith, but also did you know the Holbein paints that you know I love so much, they also have like 22 different colors of gesso. And so I like to get it done with just orange gesso, because now I've already gessoed the paper and I've got the color down, you know? Do two in, this, in one steps. <clears throat> Again, they have the silver, I like to use their carmine red too as the beginning. Here's their gold. Here's some paper. So what I'm going after, just to let you know, what I'm going after is this. And it doesn't have to be really neat. You know, you get it all over the place. And I think I will use some orange gesso. I don't do this very neatly. I just get a big wide brush. I pour it right in the middle. Everybody has their own technique. And I use lots of water. Look how far this stuff goes. Because it's very thick. It covers fantastic. I'm using a lot of water. And look how it flows. And this will dry within a few minutes. And it's done. And usually I do several of them, let them dry. Here's the gold. I'll do the gold. Look at that metallic gold. I know it's probably driving the camera nuts, but there's your metallic gold. And the reason I do that for me is here's a good beginning, of one of the ones I'm working on. You can see the gold and the orange peeking through while I scrape and scratch and start putting on other levels. Other levels. So that's kind of a, a big way of the most simplest way of why I use different colors. Let me show you another thing you can do with different colors background using rubbing alcohol. So this is another reason I like to use a different color background, especially the gesso. So this is one of those wooden panels. And so I put an orange tone gesso over the whole thing. And then after it has dried, I splash Isopropyl alcohol, you know, rubbing alcohol, doesn't matter if it's 70% or 90% at the drugstore. And I put some in my hands or in a sprayer and I just throw it on here and this is the result you get. Not all the time, but you wanna make sure that the, the color underneath, the gesso underneath is really, really dried and it's a dry day. It won't work as well if, the, if there's a lot of moisture outside. All right, so it works really great in California for us. So here we are down here on the table. 
I'm gonna do the same thing. And again, it's unpredictable. This is one of those play things. Now, I put my isopropyl alcohol, not in one of those little misters, you know, pss, 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 pss. don't do that, that's useless. ridiculous. It turns into a vapor. And so I put it in one of these industrial pump sprays where I can adjust the nozzle. I don't want it to come out as a fine spray, I want it to come out in droplets. Okay, here we go. So here, this is the gold gesso. I have my black, the white paint's really watered down. I'm gonna start off really watered down. We'll see what happens. And it may not work perfectly all over. If it's really thick, the paint won't move. But if it's gotta be just right, <laughs> it's gotta be just right. But while it's still wet, here we go. Now, you don't wanna go up really close. I'm gonna stand back about two feet and have the spray literally drop right on top of it. There we go. Little drops. You see, it works better in some areas than a finer spray. Or you can do little drops like this. As long. It's a great way to get some background texture also. And it's a good goofy way to get started if you just don't know what you want to do next. I like working this way personally so I can come back in and get some patinas in here. If I don't rub too hard, watch, if I don't rub too hard, I can continue on. Here we go. So it sits on top and creates this beautiful, almost reptile texture, and you never know how it's gonna turn out. And so when people ask you, how did you do that? Just tell them with a really tiny brush and just smile. Well, I hope you enjoyed why I use different colored backgrounds on this one. And I can't wait to see you on the next Bob Blast. Hey, keep your brushes wet and I'll see you later.